name, image, and likeness to me is a great concept for players. Um, players have always been allowed to work. Uh, this is just a different opportunity for them to make money by working and using their own name, image, and likeness, whether it's signing autographs, whether it's doing commercials or ads for some company or whatever. So there's nothing wrong with that. But now in recruiting, we have players in our state that grew up wanting to come to Alabama that they won't commit to us unless we say we're going to give them what somebody else is going to give them. I mean, we were second in recruiting last year. a and was first. a and bought every player on their team, made a deal for name, image, and likeness. All right, we didn't buy one player. All right, but I don't know if we're going to be able to sustain that in the future because more and more people are doing it. There is uh, the head coach of the University of Alabama's football school uh, team. That is Nick Saban, and he's upset. He was talking, first off, this event was about talking about the upcoming world games. But they got on some side notes about what's going on with the NIL uh, name, image, and likeness rules when it comes to the NCAA and allowing athletes to make some money off of their name, image, and likeness. As in the past, they've been exploited for uh, all of their hard work yep. for people to make money off of. like. $9 million a year from Nick Saban. Anyway, so he's upset about how this is all shaken up, about how it's put together. He wants regulatory things to be put in place by the NCAA to make sure it doesn't get out of control. Sounds like a noble thought process. In the middle of that, he did want, he did point out though that Texas A&M, he said, bought their entire team. First off, the, the language there sounds pretty bad, first of all. But also the accusation that Texas A&M, uh, who out recruited him this year, that could be the potential problem here. That they paid all their players to do it in this roundabout way through this these NIL rules. Jimbo Fisher, who was formerly an assistant with Nick Saban, wasn't very Four happy years about these LSU. words, and he said this in response. Here's Jimbo. First of all, I'll say it's a shame that we have to do this. It's really despicable. It's despicable that somebody can say things about somebody and an organ. More importantly, 17-year-old kids. You're taking shots at 17-year-old kids and their families. That they broke state laws. They're, they're, they're all money. We bought every player on this group. We never bought anybody. No rules were broken. Nothing was done wrong. It was all in the, and the way we do things, the ethics in which we do things. And these families, it's despicable that a reputable head coach could come out and say this when he doesn't get his way or things don't go his way. The narcissist in him doesn't allow those things to happen. And it's ridiculous But when, when he's not on top. And the parody in college football he's been talking about, go talk to coaches who coach for him. You'll find out all the parody. Go dig into wherever he's been. Some people think they're God. Go dig into how God did his, his deal. You may find out about, about a guy that a lot of things you don't want to know. We built him up to be the czar of football. Go dig into his past or anybody that's ever coached with him. You can find out anything you want to find out, what he does and how he does it. And it's despicable. These are people yes, that know yes, Nick Saban. Yes. They've been talking about the things he's up to. So now Nick Saban has messed around and gotten the spotlight put back on him and maybe his past practices. First of all, both Jimbo Fisher, who you saw there, and Nick Saban have both been reprimanded and punished by the SEC for this back and forth because they don't want any of this to be out there. So that is this is the first part about it. He also went after Deion Sanders in Jackson State. But first here, Rick, really fast on the Jimbo versus Nick Saban talk and what we see here for this fiery response. So real quick, um, the Nick Saban bashing of Texas A&M, it all comes down to legislation. So when the NCAA lost its appeal, and that's when you saw the surprising quotes from uh, Justice Kavanaugh and Clarence Thomas saying like, wow, I can't believe the college athletes are getting crapped on. Like that was it, it was over. So then the name image and likeness legislation basically got kicked back to the states. What Nick Saban is doing is giving a half truth here, but trying to promote himself as an almighty because at the time, Texas passed legislation that allowed boosters to basically broker NIL deals. Mm -hmm. Alabama didn't. So that is the key crux of all of this is like, well, they bought their players legally. Yeah, they did. And guess what? Your state is ass backwards. That's why you weren't able to do it, Nick. If you really wanted to get the top talent in this new day and age, you would have pressured, as I have heard some states have done, with their boosters going straight to politicians and saying, we're gonna get creamed if you guys don't pass any sort of bill to allow this to happen. They didn't do it, so guess what? You're second. He's no, and by the way, just number two. Let's go to the second half. Yeah. So we can do it for the next two or three minutes here because he also went after Deion Sanders and hinted that this player that went uh, to Jackson State, the, uh, this HBCU, um, 
was actually paid as well. Watch this. We have a rule right now that says you cannot use name, image, and likeness to entice a player to come to your school. Hell, read about it in the paper. I mean, Jackson State paid a guy a million dollars last year that was a really good Division I player to come to school. It was in the paper, and they bragged about it. Nobody did anything about it. They, they, they brag constantly about it. So this million dollar player that he's mentioning, this player to whom the Alabama Titan is referring to is Travis Hunter. And he's the number one overall recruit in the class of 2022. And he shocked the world by joining the HBCU Jackson State this year instead of, and he, he spurned uh, uh, Florida State, which ironically, uh, Deion Sanders, who's the head coach at yeah. Jackson State that he chose, actually went <laughs> to Florida State. So uh, really fast, because uh, uh, um, uh, Deion Sanders said he's going to respond to this, and it took a minute. But by the end of the day, let's jump down to uh, these last graphics here. Um, Hmm. Not numbered, but uh, when he spoke to Andescape, I want to go to uh, uh, Dion's quotes with Andescape. Uh, he said, I haven't talked to Coach Saban. I'm sure he, he's tried to call. We need to talk publicly, not privately. What you said was public. That doesn't require a conversation. Let's talk publicly and let everybody hear the conversation. Oh, man. As a former NFL player who has had relationships with dozens of players, he met either when he covered the draft for 14 years as an employee of the NFL Network or as a head coach at the Under Armour All America game. Sanders said coaches don't want him talking about what he knows when it comes to paying players. Here's another quote from him I don't even wear a watch and I know what time it is. They forget I know who's been bringing the bag and dropping it off, is what Dion said. I know this stuff. I'm not the one you want to play with when it comes to all of this stuff, Rick. Huh? Um, okay. okay. Okay, there, there's, a, there's a lot here. Um, <laughs> so do I know if Deion Sanders paid Travis Hunter to go to Jackson State? No, but what I do know from former NFL players who also starred in college, like Travis Johnson in a tweet yesterday when he saw all of this stuff with Nick Saban coming. He said, in short, y'all was NIL before NIL. That was one quote, Antonio Cromartie. Who we all know uh, as well um, said, and longtime NFL player said he was offered 60k just to come on a visit. That's a big one. Mm -hmm. uh, the third was uh, Sean Smith saying they've been buying players. So look, uh, it has been existing. Nick Saban opened all of this up, and as I said yesterday, he can't close the lid. And Noel. I was gonna have to see if this uh, shakes up. Maybe he's gonna have that public conversation with Dion. I don't anticipate that coming. Oh, I love it. I love it. Now college football is on. We're talking about it in May. 